Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. So probably the, the issue that most of us are focused on more than anything else, uh, particularly now that the federal election is over, is housing prices and the real estate market. It's, it's the topic du jour because the market is just on fire uh, and it's continued to be on fire for like the last, I don't know, five years. Certainly uh, lots of people thought during COVID that it would uh, soften and it just hasn't, uh, hasn't done that. Uh, and so I thought it would be really helpful to invite uh, real estate broker Melissa Sekhon, um on uh, from Royal LePage in Oakville and talk about what's going on in that real estate market. How much it's going up? Do we expect it to continue going up? Do we think there's going to be a bust of the bubble? Is there a bubble? What about the CMHC rules? What if that's going to change? What about some of the rumors about the federal government uh, you know, changing rules or the provincial government changing rules? And I think the other issue that a lot of people talk about a lot is, is it actually bad? Um, you know, people that have got homes have got net worth that uh, they can uh, enjoy income tax free um, versus the problem with affordability is that our kids are never going to be able to afford homes to, to, to buy. And so, you know, what do you want? You want uh, a bust or do you not want a bust? And so, Melissa, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight and uh, telling us a little bit about the real estate market. Thanks, Brian. That was quite an introduction, by the way. We've got a huge range of topics to cover. We do. But why don't we start with stats? I think stats are always the telltale of where we're going. I'm where a numbers we... guy, so go for me. No, I'm probably more of a numbers girl. Uh, where we came from, where we're going to, and uh, you know, I'm not an economist by any means, but I do like to follow what the economist trends are and, and kind of couple that into any kind of guidance that I might give a client. Okay. So year over year, uh, surprisingly, our number of transactions that we've had has actually gone down by 2,000 uh, units. So and September. In what area? Is this and th let's talk the GTA. GTA okay? down 2,000. So we had we sold a lot. 2,000 sold a lot. But we we sold 11,000 units in in September 2020, and in September 2021 we sold nine a little over 9,000 okay, units. Okay, so 2,000 a month, not 2,000 uh, a year. Year over year, year over right? Year so we had an 18 percent decrease in the number of transactions. But here's the interesting part. We had an 18.3% increase in the value of the home. So the average price home went up from $960,000 in September 2020 to, and this is the average price home, so we're talking every single home type, condo, detached home, townhouse. Well, that's interesting because I am an economist, and if you had an 18% decrease in supply, you should but, have an 18% increase in right. demand. Right, and we, do, and, and we so, do. So is supply the problem? And, and, and if that is, why aren't people listing their homes? Why aren't they selling? Uh, a number of reasons, and we'll talk about that in a second. What I wanted to say was we went up 18.3% in the value. So now the average price of home overall in Toronto is $1.136 million. And then if you take a detached home, the average price of a detached home in Toronto in the GTA is one point, over $1.7 million, $1.778. So you look at that and you go, wow, our kids have to get in. If they wanted to get into an average price home, they probably couldn't afford Can't to do it unless, unless mom and dad helped them out or they had um, some kind of an inheritance. So they are, have to deflect to the condo market in the 416. So we've seen record high sales, unit sales in the condo market, almost 1,800 unit sales of condos in the GTA. So, so sales are up in the condo, in market. The condo market quite so a bit. So sales are down in the uh, housing market, but up in the condo in market. The, up in the condo market. Okay. But overall, we've seen this crazy increase still jump 18% year over year. And last year we had almost 30% year over year. 30. 30. So when the media says, you know, the price of houses have actually gone down, what they really mean is the price of homes have still gone up from the baseline. It's just not as high as the year before. So if the year before it was 30% and this year it's 18%, it, it looks like the price of houses have gone down, but they haven't. But here's the interesting thing. Why do people buy homes? Because it's probably the number one investment that they can buy, right? Um, versus a GIC, versus the unfaithfulness uh, of an RRSP. Um, and the stock market, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and, and in addition, stock market, GIC, you know, gold, whatever, just sits yeah. there. Home, you actually right. live in. Right. So, so it's, got the, a, got a, it's got a lot of utility so at the same time. So to your point on that, people don't just buy homes for the fact of it being an investment. They actually buy homes because there's this whole idea of, and again, the homegrown Canadian, we want to root into a community. We want to 
have a family. We want to feel established in the community. We want to have that uh, kind of milestone that we can celebrate and, and move from. And the idea of being a renter, you're transient, you're dependent on whether or not the rent is going to go up, whether you're going to get kicked out or what have you. That is actually the number one reason why people want to buy. I agree. It's not necessarily because of the fact that they're looking to make a lot of money. So I making agree. the However, money the, on the, the way. So I think you know, it, it's, you're going to live in it. Yeah. Um, it it's a good investment. Um, it's appreciated over time at, uh, at, at historically attractive rates relative to almost any other investment. And yes. I think the other thing is that it is the only investment you can make assuming it's your principal resident, mm -hmm. tax-free. Exactly. And that's altogether and that, right. a pretty compelling reason yeah. why you want to have a house. And despite the, the other study I had read was despite the fact that we have these increasing prices that kind of still seem very high given the uncertainty of where we're going, especially with the fallout of COVID, and now there seem to be some breakouts in certain parts of the country, etc. We are still seeing a record number of people who own second properties. Really? Yes. And that uh, is investment interesting. Investment properties investment or properties? properties? Uh, investment properties, okay. yes. Because they're looking at an additional source of income. There's always that old adage that you shouldn't be making money just at one job. You should try to find two or three sources of income to kind of guarantee your retirement. Right. And so this whole idea of investing, if someone can get in under a million dollars and um, they don't have to have an insured mortgage, meaning they don't have to put 20% down, why wouldn't they if they can rent it out and cover their costs? So that's an interesting phenomenon too, that we have a record number of Canadians are actually saying, I either want to get a second home for investment purposes to build my equity and to supplement the income, or they have done Is it. that primarily in condos or is it also in single family homes? Um, it, it's really where the affordability is. So a younger sector is probably going to be looking at condo ownership yeah. because they can put in less than 20%. If you've got a seasoned investor, he's probably going to look at more location, how much he can get for his rent. Is it going to be long term? He's not looking to flip it. He wants it to be a long term investment. Right. And he would be looking at, or he or she would be looking at a single family dwelling. So housing values today versus rents are at an all time high. Yes. And, uh, and, and if you make an investment in a condo or house, you don't make money um, on it. Um, you know, on your current, you only make it based on appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, the typical uh, rent doesn't come close to meeting the mortgage, let alone a mortgage plus, mm -hmm. uh, plus a, an equity return. Um, the housing prices to income are similarly at all-time highs. And if you take a look at the graphs, they are comparable to where they were in the United States prior to the crash in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. So if, if we are at an all-time high in price, mm -hmm. and it is a high versus income, and it's a high versus rents, mm -hmm. Aren't we set for a bubble burst at some point in time? You know what, I'm not going to answer that one way or the other, but I will tell you one thing, is that if you didn't see an 18% increase year over year next year, but you saw a 10% increase year over year, isn't that still a, a double digit increase? Or even a single, you know how many years we went on before 2008? Single digit increases and people were just like amazed. There, we were, had 4%, 5% rent, or uh, interest rate, sorry. Uh, even higher, 6%, 7%, and we were seeing single-digit increases of 6 7 8%, but it was a guaranteed income, um, or sorry, a guaranteed increase, and people were fine with that. Yeah. So I think now the expectation that we have these huge jumps, uh, you know, people do get disappointed on, in general, like, yeah. wow, it's not 30%, it's not 18%, but I think we need to draw it back down and go, as long as we have a positive increase, that's really what's important. Well, the statistic I saw, and I think it may have ended in 2019 or something like that prior to COVID, but uh, in the GTA, that real estate has gone up by twice inflation. So twice inflation yeah. would be like 6 7 8%, yes. not yes. 18 or 30%. Yes. Uh, and so, but that would average in times of, uh, of, of falling uh, real estate prices yeah. as well as increasing. Now, in the last 50 years, I think there's only been two years of falling uh, real estate prices. Was that, I'm, I'm not going to date myself here now, but was that the late 80s? Uh, late 80s, early 90s, you're right. Yeah. And, uh, and at that point in time, uh, um, you know, people had a similar situation uh, mm -hmm. where prices were high and said, no, mm -hmm. it's never going to come down. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and there was an economist that, uh, I think it was CIBC at the time that said no. Mm -hmm. uh, and he ended up being uh, um, you know, right. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a 22 or something like that uh, percent uh, drop in real estate mm -hmm. prices. And it was devastating. Uh, people lost their homes. Uh, people mm -hmm. were shocked that there was such a, a bust in the housing market. But then, you know, 
two years later, it started to come back up again. It started to come back again. No one predicted, like in 2017, we had the craziness go on. And, you know, we were getting over bids. We were getting a lot of foreign investors coming in. Um, I live in Oakville, so I can tell you the, the foreign invest, investors who offered on homes was, you know, record setting. And they actually increased the prices of our homes in Oakville exponentially at a rate that would have never happened otherwise. This was in 2017. We predicted that would never happen again. And again, when COVID happened, everyone predicted there was this four week or six week hiatus where everybody sort of had to pass the blink test. March and, and April. Yes, to say, oh, what's going on here? But when they realized that they had to now all be in the same home for extended periods of time. And work. And work. And the, do schooling. And do schooling. They all started looking at their calculators and saying, can we afford to size up, get something that has two offices at home, something that has a gym at home, a swimming pool, so we can contain our family together in our bubble and still live life as we once you knew know, it's it. It's interesting. i got to tell you a quick story if I could. So just before uh, we were all um, you know, sequestered away in COVID, I think it was like the last week uh, before the retail stores were closed, I ended up buying a hot tub. Um, and uh, and, and the, the store knew it was going to close the following Saturday and had the hot tubs uh, on for sale, like 30% off. So I scooped a hot tub, put it in. A month later, the hot tubs were selling at 50% yes. premiums because yes. they couldn't get hot tubs anymore. And yes. everyone else wanted yes. a hot tub because yes. they all were staying at home. Yes. Anyway, we're going to take a break and come back more with Melissa in just a minute because uh, we've talked about uh, the housing market. Now I want to talk about some of the, the sort of the government actions and other things, uh, as well as some of the things that you and I can do uh, in regards to uh, selling a home and listing a home, getting ready for sale and get Melissa's point of view on that. So take a break, everyone, and come back in just a minute. She knows who she is. She knows who we are, how tough this pandemic has been, and what needs to be done to get us back on track. Andrea Horvath is a fighter for people, for workers on the front lines, families trying to find a home they can afford, seniors who deserve better care, and kids needing safer schools and a future to look forward to. Fierce, loyal, optimistic. I'm Andrea Horvath. I'm proud to be on your side. A message from Ontario's NDP. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Welcome back to The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. We're here with Melissa Sescon, who is a real estate broker with uh, Royal LePage Real Estate, uh, real estate Services yes. in, uh, in Oakville. Um, how long have you been in the real estate market? So I've been uh, in real estate for 13 years. I've been a broker for 11 years, and I have a, uh, a decent sized team. We manage everything from our core competency area, which is Halton, Oakville, Burlington, Milton area, right through um, GTA, right through to Niagara. So the team oh, really? handles, yeah, the team handles the areas that we need to. Uh, what we're finding is that there are specific core areas that keep coming up over and over and over again. So we've become subject matter experts in that for sure. And I see that you're very active on social media. Yes. And uh, you and your daughter, who's part of your team, have yes. these little coffee uh, yes. uh, conversations yes. uh, all the time. Yes. About coffee club. Coffee club yes. with different suggestions on what people should be thinking about doing yes. to sell a home, get it ready, yeah. etc. And what certain terms mean, uh, kind of, you know, beware, buyer beware of this or, you know, seller, here are your rights or what have you. Because very often these things get overlooked uh, when we're in such a rush to, you know, client is in a rush to put their house on the market. Maybe everything isn't explained to them properly right. or same thing for buying too. So we like to make sure that. So let me go through well some of those questions um, because sure. I think, you know, we spent the last uh, couple of minutes talking about the market in general yes. and what you're saying is that it's hot and uh, you expect it to stay hot. It may be as not as hot. It may slow down, but it's yes. not going to go negative in your belief. It's going to yeah. go up maybe by smaller double digit or even single digit yeah. kind of appreciation, yes. uh, which says there's a good opportunity uh, for people that want to sell. And more importantly, for people who want to buy, you should buy now. Uh, why wait for spring? Yeah. 
um, the uh, old uh, Adam in, Chair. It, in spring, it, you know what, typically, I don't know what it is, it's like spring is in the air, everyone's out, they're tired of being in all winter long, and it is actually an emotional and psychological thing that happens, and when people are out in droves, that automatically drives the price, price up, up because, yes, exactly, so, so I encourage my clients to go out now. So I get, I get, I don't know, you know, and probably everyone gets, uh, you know, I probably get a dozen different real estate agents and brokers stuff things in my mailbox every day. I get probably a dozen that send me calendars every uh, mm -hmm. year. Um, and you know, How do you pick mm -hmm. a real estate broker or a real estate agent? How do you pick one? Um, one of the things is, is no. um, first of all, word of mouth, ask around. Ask who your next door neighbor who had a great experience has used. Have they used somebody that they were very happy with? Ask them specifically what it was that they did in that selling process to make their property stand out. You know, sticking a sign on the lawn is not the only way to sell a house, especially not in this day and age. We have to take advantage of all of the technology that's available to us. For example, we rely heavily on social media as the precursor to actually putting the house on the market. Right. So next, in about four days, I'm going to be putting a house on the market, but tomorrow I'm going to be putting a coming soon on the lawn. Sure, for drive-by, that's great. I have to send the word out to I've all my seen prospects. A lot of uh, you know homes on Instagram, on Facebook that have got an automatic link to. Is that a whole new way to? Yeah, absolutely. And there are many apps out there. You can obviously sign on with the app. You can create your own app for it, or what have you. But the the breadth of how it gets uh, put out there on the market is just amazing yeah. like it it just increases exponentially on how quickly you can get it out to droves of people yeah. and they will in turn contact you and they do it's not like oh okay it's just going out there and it's sitting in nowhere, nowhere and, and, and I've seen virtual tours and 360 mm -hmm. tours we do and that tours and things like yeah. that is that all yeah we do that we do a lot of cinematography as well cinematography. where yes where we actually Go, uh, do an intro on the house, introduce ourselves, do an intro on the house, really get people to feel the home and do a tour with us in the home. It's professionally done. You're pointing out things that wouldn't normally get pointed out in a, in a picture. You might open up a cupboard and say, look, I just want to pull out this pantry shelf or whatever. But when you're talking about it, it's all professionally done, it really gives the person a feel for what that's like. And now with COVID restrictions, you can only have half hour showings. Um, no kids typically are allowed into the showing. Um, you've got to use your PPE. Everything has to be signed right. off. Yes, as a result of all that, even though we are an essential service, we still have protocols to follow. So it's not- So the virtual showing is more important it's than ever. It's great because we try to encourage our clients, did you see everything virtually first? Yeah. And now for sure, do you want to go in and see the property? What? It's the courtesy we extend to the seller what, and to the buyer. What percentage of homes get on MLS versus being sold without MLS? Uh, I will say, I can't give you that exact answer. What I can tell you are the ones that are being sold exclusively do sit on the market longer. Right now we have 14 days out on average on the market for any home, any condo right now. On an exclusive, I have seen 33 days, 60 days, 150 so days. So why do people choose to sell it exclusively? Uh, sometimes they think that the commission rate would be lower yeah. because it's not getting exposed to MLS. Sometimes they do want to just keep it very low key. They maybe want it to be viewed more like a pocket listing, that if the realtor comes up with a really good buyer, that then he can bring or he or she can bring that person through the home and quote unquote double end it and again lower the commission. Um, there are a number of What's reasons for it. What's double end it mean? means when, I'll give you an example for me personally, if I were double ending something, it means that if I were the listing agent and a, a buyer off the street came and called and said, you know, we don't have an agent, we would like to see this property, we're very interested, and they wanted to put an offer in it, if I chose to represent them, I'd be double ending it. You're, you're representing the buyer and, and the seller. seller. But in, on our team, we have a hard fast rule. Uh, I won't represent the buyer and the seller. I will refer it to an associate. Um, I feel it's like a legal thing. Um, you want to have your own representation yeah. and I want to have my own representation, right? So I think in this world of being ethical and offering the best service be that we that, can, uh, you know, the am I working on your, whose interest am I working on? So they get the double Exactly, commission. exactly. So, but in the case of double ending, very often a seller may say, well, because you're doing the work and no outside party is coming in, no third party is coming in to represent the buyer, can you reduce the commission? When I see these homes on uh, on Instagram or Facebook or the bro the brochures that come to my door or when I've gone to look at them, they're all perfect. Yeah. How do these homes get perfect? Oh, stagers. 
Stager, stager, stager. That's what I was actually doing earlier today. Um, I do have my staging, staging designation as well. But, uh, What's a staging designation and what is staging? I mean, staging is beautifying the appearance of the home so that people can walk in and see the space better, uh, clearer, and imagine themselves actually living in the property. If it's cluttered, let's face it, you want to walk through a cluttered house, you want to walk through a house that doesn't have the bed made, that the walls are a beautiful green, for example. I had a broker come into my house on Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. and saw a whole bunch of shoes at the front door and said, you got to get rid of all these shoes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. But that's, that's just small potatoes. Usually when we go in, uh, it's a little bit more overwhelming and we try to make it very underwhelming for our client. We try to keep them very calm and just say, don't worry, we have this. Sometimes it's as simple as rearranging furniture. Sometimes it's a little more and complicated. Less personal is what I understand. Make it less personal. So it's something that other people could see up. them living in yes. rather than it's yes. your house. Yes, open up the space. Try to do neutral palettes on the wall uh, because you you may like the fluorescent I've green. I've got beautiful wood uh, wainscoting in my house. Mm -hmm. And I had this broker come in and tell me uh, they wanted to paint it all white. Well, you know what? I'd like to meet her or him because, you know what? She probably had a really good reason for saying that. Truly, because White. you know what? Wood. Yes, yes. I mean, wood works well in certain circumstances, but if it darkens the room and makes the room smaller, I can see why a stager or decorator would suggest maybe a Chantilly lace or something, which would be really nice. What's Chantilly lace? To color? Benjamin Moore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is um, holdback offers? Okay. So when they have a holding date on an offer, uh, on a, an offer date for an, uh, a listing, typically a smart agent, an agent who knows her product or knows his product, may suggest to the seller, listen, you've got an amazing property here. It would be such a shame to get an offer in on day one. Maybe we should suggest a date where we can actually hold offers to allow proper exposure of the property on the marketplace to allow agents to come in from the GTA, from you know Oakville, Burlington, Milton, Hamilton, Niagara, wherever it is, and then on a certain given day, allow everyone on a level playing so field. So that, that's to a them. positive depiction of holdback offers. Yeah. I've heard it uh, depicted yeah. in a negative manner. That what yeah. you're doing is you're you, you take a 1.2 million dollar house and you're pricing it at 999 or something mm -hmm. like that. So you're underpricing mm -hmm. the house and you're holding it back so that people come in and have to blind bid and end up mm -hmm. bidding. Mm -hmm. You know, one four or one well, five. Is that let's why face it. brokers do yeah. pullback offers? Yeah. Well, some do. Everyone has different motivation. If a house was really worth, if a property was really worth 1.2 million, getting priced at 999, uh, and it really is worth 1.2 million, so it's obviously not getting listed at market fair market value. Yeah. Yeah. And you can let the market decide where it's going to be. Here, the bottom line is, Brian. The market will decide what it is they're going to pay for a property. I see so many of these signs so, that people put up going, sold 500000 or 300000 or 200000 yeah. over a price. But the fact uh, of the matter is, is if it was actually underpriced for 300000 then it's not really exactly. being sold 300000 So, over So asking. if you see something as a holdback offer, is that good for the seller or good for the buyer? Um, one of the reasons they do it is they try to bring in as many buyers as possible in the shortest amount of time so possible. So it's very good for the seller. In they may market. end up netting the exact same thing that they would have netted had they priced it at an appropriate price. So if it really is worth between 1.2 and 1.3 and they decide to price it at 1.299, hoping to get 1.3, they may end up getting 1.250. If they price it at 999, they might get 1.250. So the net could very well end up being the same. You know, it's interesting in Australia, what they do is they have rules and regulations. They do. That uh, you, what you do is, uh, is the selling broker actually stands on the front porch. All the other brokers come and you yes. bid like it's an art yeah, auction. Yeah, it's like an auction. It's an auction. I think and I think they've even tossed, I, I don't know if the, the um, uh, Ontario Real Estate Board or the Canadian Real Estate Board has even t uh, talked about that. I tossed that idea around. I have read it. And I actually thought that I had read it being something that we would consider here in Canada. I at think some it makes point. a lot of sense. Um, there was this move uh, at uh, you know the first couple of months of COVID for people to move out of the 416 into the 905, and yes. frankly out to the 519 or yes. 705 or whatever. Yeah. Um, is that still happening? Yes, really? very much, very much so. In fact, um, when I take a listing, I very often look at the merits of the home and try to imagine now who would be the demographic who would come here. You know, downtown Burlington, I could see a really young family from Toronto coming and being very happy to pay the price of downtown Burlington and pay over that because they want all the amenities close to the water, maybe what they're used to in Toronto, 
but know that they can't afford that Toronto price. Right. So they would pay 100 or 200 over asking in Burlington. We are seeing a lot of that. And I very often target my marketing for those to kind of demographics. I want to bring in outside. I want to bring in people from the GTA. They would consider our pricing to be a blessing and we would consider them to be a blessing to come in to purchase our property. So if it was your own son or daughter, yes, um, would you tell them now's the time to buy or no, we're overpriced, wait? Um, again, it depends on location and it depends on opportunity, completely on those two things. It could be, you know, in one location that's so overheated that it would not be appropriate to, to go in and even think about purchasing. I always like to, again, we talk about trends, look at what are the up and coming towns or cities that are making their mark on the map. And, and, then, and then see what we're doing. So we'll, we'll go back a couple of years. Hamilton was the big hot one. Right. And you could pick up a detached home for under $500,000. And okay? it's appreciated like crazy since And it's appreciated then. like so crazy the since then. You know what? I mean, I, I don't want to say towns like London, but London, Ontario really? is huge right now. Really? Yes, it is huge um, because it's still I've close enough. It's not Milton. Yeah. Milton already was there. Was it's there. already did it, it done, done its thing. Georgetown, same thing. Because Georgetown's getting the influx from Brampton yeah. and from Mississauga, right? And they were. So we got to go all the way to London? Yeah, you oh got to go God. to London. You can go out to St. Catharines. St. Catharines is great. Uh, any of the areas out that way. Outside of Niagara, Niagara has hit a huge, um, crazy plateau, not even a plateau, they, they're continuing to climb. We are getting retirees from the GTA Going wanting to, like. yeah, go, and they've got the money and they can well, afford listen, you've it. you've been great. Thank you so much. If people want to contact you, what's the easiest way if they want to hire you or ask for your advice oh. or something like that for them to uh, contact you? Is it through social okay. media or what? Uh, there's a number of ways. Uh, contact me on Instagram at Suscon Team. That's the handle for and that. Sascon is spelled C E S C O N at Sascon Team, or they can just um, send an email to Sascon Team at royallepage.ca, and I would be happy to talk with them. Well, that's Melissa Sascon on the real estate market uh, in the Greater Toronto area, particularly uh, Peel, uh, Oakville, uh, and, and further west than that. Uh, and bottom line, as uh, as I think we talked about off the top, it is uh, something you're going to live in something that's an investment, it's appreciated greater than inflation over history, and it's tax-free if it's a principal residence, the only thing you've got. So uh, my, my advice uh, is uh, unless it's really overheated, now's the time to buy. Thanks for joining us, everybody.